All right. What the hell is a slice? In Go, slices are abstractions built on top of arrays which allow us to work with lists of items of variable length. The type of a slice is indicated by an empty square brackets followed by whatever type element the slice is composed of. So that would be a slice of ints. This would be a slice of strings. Notice that this is different than arrays where arrays you would also have to specify the length of the array type. I already have an array declared here. We can make a slice from this array by using the following notation. First the array name and then within brackets we use a colon to indicate the range. On the left side I'll put zero to indicate we'll start with the first element and on the right I'll put five which is the length of the array. Notice that the left-handed element is inclusive and the right-handed element is exclusive. So this slice will start at index 0 and go up to index 4, but not including index 5. Let's go ahead and print this out to make sure it works and run this in the terminal. And sure enough, this array and this slice currently have the same values. We can use slices to get just a part of an array as such. We can also leave out the values that we indicate here. If we leave out the left hand side it will assume that we're starting at the first value. And if we leave the right hand side it will assume that we're going to the last value. If we leave out both sides it will just take the entire array. Now a slice actually consists of three things. First the underlying array that it is pointing to. Second is the length. We can use the built-in function len to get the length. And the third thing is the capacitance of the array, and we can use the cap built-in function to get that. If we run this now, this means that the capacitance is 5 and the length is 5. It's worth pointing out that currently this slice is pointing to the first element of this array. At least initially, the slice does not have its own allocation of memory. I can prove this by printing out some of the underlying pointers. We use percent %p to get at the pointer value. And the first thing we'll print out is the pointer for the array. And the second thing we'll print out is the pointer for the first element of our slice. And fix the error. And sure enough, our array starts at this address in memory. And the first element of our slice is also located at the same address in memory. But it's important to point out that this is not guaranteed to last. We can add elements to slice using the append built-in function. So slice a is equal, is equal to slice a plus an element. Forgot to put append here. So again, initially, our slice and our array we're pointing to the same underlying block of memory where we have our elements stored. However, after we append one element to our array, we see it's grown by one. The length of our slice is now six to indicate that we have six elements. The capacity is 10. That means there's a contiguous block of memory that Go is managing. And now the location of our original array and the location of the first element of our slice are no longer located in the same location. Let's run our append function in the loop and print out our slice as we go. So now as we loop through our slice, we continue to add elements. After the first append, the capacitance has been increased to 10, and then we keep adding elements until the length exceeds our capacitance. At that point, the capacitance doubles, and we can continue to add elements at the same block in memory. Lastly, if we're going to change an element within the array, say the second element, or the third element, we will notice that our original underlying array is not at all associated with our new slice, which we can demonstrate in the terminal. On the top we have our underlying array. The third element is now negative 100, but that did not change our slice at all, because under the hood, Go has allocated new memory for a slice to append elements into.